what happened to the the type shows when we were kids. When we were kids, Beretta, Beretta, yeah, Crotchy oh yeah, Beretta, yeah, yeah, single, yeah. you know, yeah. and there was a guy that you know played pool, but in the meantime yeah. he investigated whatever, and he didn't even wasn't investigating. The best show ever was Quincy. Good show. Oh yeah, fucking guy was a. We, my show. family used to watch that. Fucking all the Quincy. Time, it was yeah. only one guy. I know. I remember what was the show when we were kids on NBC with Rock Hudson. Rockford Finals? Oh, Mr. and Mrs. Mr. Yes. What is it? Rockford Finals? No. No, no. Mr. Mr. and Mrs. Mrs. McMillan or something. McMillan, yeah. Was it McMillan and White? That's what it was. Yeah. But, 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 Cannon? Cannon, Cannon that's, was but that's what I'm saying. Cannon like, was hysterical. Take those kind of shows, Beretta, Columbo. I'm the guy that could do it. I'm the kind of guy that could bring the fucker back. If they have the right writer and they write it with the right sensibility, I could do that. 2013. Maybe she'll produce it, Courtney Cox. Cannon, he was like 400 pounds, but you shoot him from eight feet and he go like You this. could be the fucking boss. You could, could be, be like a Cannon. boss. Sure. You could be the... Sure, I could, you could be like be your Can Charlie. Yeah. Absolutely, I was Well, I could that. definitely see a Rockford Files kind of thing, but you're in a trailer in Topanga. Andy Dick is your crazy neighbor living in a shed. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you could solve crimes. And every day Why you not? want to yeah. strangle him, but uh, right before you But then you're it has a sense him, of humor, you know what I mean? Yeah, right but it's real. Right before you to fucking strangle him, a buddy comes over with a piece of paper, you got to go see this guy. Yeah. He man. wants to ice himself or something. I, I, there's definitely room for something like that. You know, a throwback. I love yeah. throwbacks. They don't do them enough. Are you an actress, too? Um, you know, I am a comedian, but I did do some acting, and uh, uh, I did do some, you yeah. know, yeah. I'm not, uh, I don't like to audition. I can't <coughs> audition. I audition. Yeah, auditioning is the it's worst. It's a joke. And I hate when you go into a room when you audition, and every chick that's in the room but you, you saw on TV on the last three days. And you're like, oh, fuck, Really? Really, <laughs> you know what it's I intimidating. Mean? It's so intimidating. In yeah, you know. I've been I've been up for some big stuff. Like I once was up for Friends in the Lisa Kudrow part, but then I think it was a trick because they all the time wanted to give her the part. You know how they right. do that, right? They it's just early. do that. They got the offer out. We love yeah. you. We love yeah. you, but it ain't going any further. What the fuck is that? <laughs> we love you. Or like you know, I had a guy I auditioned years ago for this Kelly Ripper thing, and the guy goes, he was an Italian guy, executive producer. He goes. You're really great. I saw you in this federal hell years ago. I thought you were going to be a fucking movie star. All this bullshit. And then the guy goes, you should have your own show. You're actually too powerful for her. Well, how fucking good is that? I'm trying to get the job here. I'm too good for her. So you're not going to cast me because I'm overqualified? You know what I mean? Or another guy told me, I had an audition where you came out of. The guy, I guess, liked what you did, but... He goes, could you do like what Nick Dottorio goes, when well, Nick Dottorio was just here. Why don't you fucking give Nick Dottorio, because how am I, I going to do what Nick Dottorio did? I don't know what he did. And first of all, if you want Nick Dottorio, then hire Nick Dottorio. It's Why amazing. are you asking me to do what Nick Dottorio did? It's amazing. I, I, I heard this boy. fucking actor told me the story. I almost fell over. I said, what? The guy told you to do what I, what I did? Could you do like, what, could you do like, maybe I, maybe I had an interesting take on it, but for whatever reason... Maybe they didn't see me physically or whatever. You know, you never know what's in their head. You never know. That's why auditioning is a crock. It's a sham. It's bullshit, you know. Uh, <laughs> no, it is. I mean, I, I, you know, I rarely got things from auditioning. Very rare. I'm very, very lucky to get a couple of nice jobs from auditioning. But most of the time, you know. I like auditioning. You do? You I do? fucking love it. Why? I love, I like auditioning more than getting the job. When they call me for wardrobe and I gotta go work, I gotta drive to Calabasas, that's when it's all You audition over. for Long Shine? Yes. Yes and no. Yes and no. It was, it was funny because I sent a, they didn't want to see me, so I sent a tape. I went to Houston, Texas, and before I left here, my feelings were very hurt. They said we wanted to see a star name. And in Houston one night, I was doing fucking coke, and I was up, and I was thinking, <laughs> and I came to the conclusion that I followed Paul Mooney for all that time. I go, who can they go with? They're either going to go with Saragusa, who's a great character, Sharippa, who's a great character, or Big Pussy, who's a great character. But as far as Adam Sandler and funniness, I wow. knocked them all out of the box. It's sure. just, this is the truth. I, I'm experienced. This is yeah. not a, a right. sham. Or, so do. I've done the halftime at a Buffalo Sabres game. So I got up that day and I went to a fucking play it against sports and I got a helmet that was too small that they had a pound into my head and I was 400 pounds and I got a shirt that was a 1X and I put it on to show every fucking roll and I went and bought a football and I had Chuck Savage throw the ball to me while his wife taped uh -huh. on the field. And then I took a scene from the movie and I just did it by myself. 
at the thing and I sent it in and they didn't want to see me and by the time I got back to LA that Monday they had called my uh, agent and said Adam wants to meet with you and Chris Rock uh, that's because amazing. I went, and bo- but they didn't want to see me. Or oh, so they initially they told you no, they wanted to go with a star name. They wanted a big name. Yeah, and I just went out of the initiative and made a fucking tape and sent yeah. it. And even at the lunch when I met them, they were like, "Wow, we're only going to really hire you for four weeks." They didn't decide till the first week that they were going to fucking keep me with oh, three really? outs and all that shit. That's when they oh, decided. they weren't they weren't sure they weren't sure, and then they put because the, the training camp. I guess they only wrote me in for a couple weeks. And then I wasn't going to come back. So they said I was only going to be in New Mexico for like three weeks. Oh, yeah? So then after the first week of triads and my fat stomach, when my ball came out Adam of the show, Adam said, that's Adam, it. they said, there's a contract in your thing. And I'm like, what contract? And they go, you're going to put you on that series. you here for the remainder. Remember the day they wrapped us and then they unwrapped us, but you didn't go back. I didn't go back. I went back. I told you to go back. <laughs> No fucking guys. I said, they, you know, they wrapped us. And, and, and I go, Joe, I'm on my way to the spa with some place where you get all these, you know, waterfalls or whatever. It's a thousand. I, I don't know what it was called. Anyway, I said, <laughs> they wrapped us. They wrapped us. And then Joe, Joe's like, ah, fuck it. I'm not going back. I said, Joe, we got to go back. Politically, we got to do the right thing. We got to go back. Because I'm not going back. I said, I'm going back. All right, fuck it. I turned the car around. I go back. I go back and they wrapped me again. But they thanked me for going. I'm like, see, Joe, you should have fucking came back because, you know, Joey was just, that's how Joey was. He didn't mean anything by it. But, you know, he was like, I'm not fucking going back. No way. They wrapped me. I'm not going to be on it. I got wrapped and I got wrapped again. <laughs> oh, they wrapped you? Uh, yeah, but I Christmas wanted to party. do the right thing because there was a lot of, you know. We're back, bitches. <laughs> Joey Diaz, yeah, Felicia we- Michaels. That's right. Being the Beast podcast, what's happening, you sexy, sexy motherfucker? Oh my goodness, You're like really you, sexy. like you, really? You know, I'm I not did really comb my hair for you, Nick like I did comb my hair. She's, she's, she's hot. a bad motherfucker. Yeah, this is no I, lie. you know, the, the, when we leave here, I'll tell you her credentials pretty, and, and then they're die. sexy. And you she's are just sexy. The no, 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 I mean it. Like, I have a thing for Hannah Storm right now. I'm like fucking in love with her. But she kind of reminds me of that type, and I'm like, it's like I, my my taste is changing again. As I get older, yeah, yeah, my buds are changing. I always taste does change when you I get know. older. You I'm a sucker woman. for white yeah. women. Yeah. I'm starting, I've always I'm been starting a to go back to the the the, um, the milky white. I don't oh, know. I love it. I, know, I fucking but, love it. But she's it. She got it going right on. on. Right on. And I am smart enough to where I invite people in in a dark space with one light in the corner to halo my hair. But it's really funny, Felicia. I got to tell you this, and not in a bad way or in a yeah. sexual way. Uh, the last couple of weeks, we just had men for guests. And the next day when I call them to say thank you, I swear to God, they're like, bro, that blonde blew my fucking mind. Oh, and really? they go on a tirade like Ed Suarez went on a tirade. Brody Stevens was About like, her? Yeah, Brody Stevens was well, like, I've known her. those are just the sweetest I've known ever. of her for 10 years, but you really... Where are you from? Uh, I'm an army brat, so I grew up a little bit everywhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. She's the real thing. <laughs> By the way, for those of you listening, we have a Nick Turturro in the studio. There's my boy. That's yeah. right. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Joey D. Nick, now where are you from originally? Queens? I'm from Rosedale, Queens. It's, uh, Rosedale, Queens. Right by the uh, the swamps, uh, the by the Rockaways. The plane just to come right, over my house. Exactly. Yeah, I almost exactly. land on my house. When I was a kid, I'd be on the phone. they go, what's that? i go, it's a plane. And basically come over. My father used to say we lived on a fucking runway. Cause and that's LaGuardia. It, no, Kennedy. Oh, you're in the oh, county. Yeah. Oh. Like, you go down my block, across the uh, Hook Creek over there, Hook Creek Boulevard, and you're in Valley Stream. So I was on the borderline of Queens and Nassau, but I'm a Queens boy. The other day, we were at a, a funeral. My last uncle, the last Totoro, my father's brother, passed away in Howard Beach. And we got out of the car by the church, and I said to my brother John, I said, uh, I said I'm home, man fucking home man because I know when I'm in Queens I'm a Queens but I'm a suburb I'm not a bro- Brooklyn's weird my brother lives in Brooklyn it's like a different city it's like I, I, I like Manhattan I'm not a Brooklyn guy no one we know about Brooklyn like in Main Street got my, uh, De Niro goes where are we going Brooklyn what do we know about Brooklyn he goes he goes do I know the jungle Harvey Keitel goes because we don't know Brooklyn Charlie we don't know Brooklyn why are we going to Brooklyn I love that fucking movie Brooklyn Main is Street. like the fourth yeah, largest city. But I'm a city. Queens. Isn't I'm a it? Queens boy. That's, that Brooklyn, the, yeah. that's the problem with Brooklyn. That but you know what's it's funny? A melting pot. We used to go to Howard Beach from Rosedale as kids because we didn't go anywhere. We weren't like the Brady Bunch. If we went like 10 miles, it was like an event. So going to Howard Beach was like my cousin's house over there. That was like, we thought that was so far. It was eight miles. Eight miles away. And I'm like, Howard Beach, man, that's far. 
Yeah, but it wasn't that far. It was only eight miles. And people tell you, like, that's all the way at Howard Beach. Yeah. Because that's all how they the say it. You yeah. got to go all the way to Howard, Howard Beach. Beach. So you get so scared. Yeah. You know, you're like, where the fuck am I the going? Bow Wow, man. Cross Bay Boulevard. The original Lenny's Clam Bar. It was special. Then you go over the bridge, Rockway Playland, the fucking roller coaster. Oh, man. Now, I was when you get off the airport, what? how many? Like, when, when I get off Kennedy, Kennedy, I said that's the first. Five, ten minutes. That's it. Oh, that's, really? that's, you know, you're right there. Yeah, you're right in Queens. Yeah. yeah. As soon as you get off Kennedy, like the, the, the second conduit, exit or the something, conduit. it says Queens. Yeah, no, you you're, in, you're, you're in Queens. You, the Kennedy Airport was, they come in a couple of ways. They come in over Howard Beach. They come in over Rosedale or Woodmere. Rosedale's in the back, swamps. You know, like uh, they got the conduit back there. They had a plane that went down one year. I was watching the Yankee game. I think Bonds, Barry, Bobby Bonds was playing, 75, I remember. I always was sick with fevers when I was a kid. Had a high fever. And fucking, I, we heard something <laughs> on the other side of, we heard something on the other side of Rosedale with the fucking, you know, we heard a boom or something. And the plane went down. A basketball player was in that. A crazy guy played in the ABA, Wendell Ladner. This fucking guy ran after Rick Barry. I saw Rick Barry in the ABA. I saw the ABA, man. Me too. Dr. J and his yeah, Afro. That's my yeah, league, yeah, yeah, yeah. man. I was an ABA. Fucking renegade too. league. Oh, my God. Love the ABA. I didn't, I didn't know about this. Oh, the ABA is romantic. Really? It's like... It was like it was like what the NBA wanted to be. It was cool. It was nobody, cool. Nobody showed All up. All these was crazy only... motherfucking oh, brothers. Afros. They had cheerleaders, but they had Julius Irving and Dr. Larry Keenan. Dr. J Keenan and Larry Keenan and, Keenan and George McGinnis. That were Dan very Nichol, exciting. The red, white, and blue ball. The three-point. That's where the three-point That's the where the three-point three came oh, really? from. Yeah. They didn't play oh, much really? defense. Wow. No, nobody played defense. Fucking high scoring. Billy Pulse. Billy Pulse. John Williamson. Super John Williamson. I used to yep. run home Super to John. watch Dr. J. I saw the last game in 76 oh, when the God. Nets won the championship. And I would sit I was, there and cry. I was a little kid. I was on the court, the, the Coliseum. And, and I think some guy, some girl was on his girlfriend or boyfriend's shoulders. And I was squeezing her ass or some shit. You know, she was like, it was on the court, everybody celebrating. No, no one pays attention when they're celebrating. Right. And I think I was a little kid that was squeezing her butt or something. I don't know. I was, I was mischievous. I didn't know that you were an uh, Emmy nominated actor uh, from uh, NYB. Uh, twice. Twice. Yeah. NYPD. Wow. Yeah. Wow. In the first season. Were you surprised when you were nominated? I was blown away because when I first got on the show, uh, it was like I almost didn't even get an audition because they they wanted to see only Puerto Rican guys or something. Uh -huh. And this woman, her casting lady, I'm not going to say, she wouldn't let me in the room. And my agent was this funny guy, this guy Marty Lisak. He was like, don't worry, honey. Don't worry, baby. I'm going to get you in. I'm going to get you in the room. I was a doorman at the time. And... Uh, he finally said, it, it's happening, I'm getting you in. Bochco and all these guys were in New York seeing actors. And I ran up there in my doorman pants and threw the sweatshirt on. And They didn't ask me if I was a Hispanic. Well, it was about New York cops. The guy's name was Martinez. But I was really you know, innocent and kind of virgin-like. I had done a few Spike Lee movies. So I was doing it like on the side. Uh -huh. And the year before, I actually did a pilot, a sitcom called Better Days for, uh, with Thomas. It didn't get picked up, but I wore a big turban, whatever, and I was, you know, it was crazy. <laughs> I, yeah, I, and I was, I was on the door, and then they, I figured, well, I got to go back to the door, and then, then they loved what, you know, I didn't have many lines in the audition. It was just like, hands up, I'm up for that. I don't know. It was just like a couple of lines, uh -huh. and and they said they love you, they love you, honey, but they don't know if you're. If you have any Spanish blood, my brother was like, I told him you were Mexican. We said, no, 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 not them. Don't say Mexican. I said, tell them Puerto Rican. Tell them whatever. I don't know. Just tell them something. But uh, I said, what's the difference? I'm ethnic. I could be fucking anything. I'm New York. I'm as New York as they come. You know, and so they, they, they finally gave me the part. And then I didn't know nothing about television. And my, my agent goes, this is going to be a huge show, baby. And I said, really? I didn't know. Which better not knowing. You know, and then and then he goes, you have seven out of thirteen. I didn't know what that meant. I said, what is that? He goes, well, you're guaranteed seven. I said, am I a regular? Uh, yeah. I said, are you sure? I wasn't even sure if I was a regular. I wasn't a regular. Make a long story short, after the few first few shows, they kind of fell in love with the character. They go, we love you. You're gonna be in the opening credits. And I was like, yeah, I thought I was in the open. I thought I was. They go, nah. I and I had a little trailer. Then they moved me across the street with all the big guys and. And then the rest was history. And then the show hit, and I did 20 out of 22 in my first year. 
you know, and, and the show was just, I didn't even know how good it was. Now when I look back on it, it was really stunning. Red Dog, he was great. You know, Caruso took Jimmy me under Smith. his wing. I mean, that first the year was... The white fucking dude, but the big then, dude. the show gets acclaim. It gets nominated. My mother calls me in the summer. She goes, Nicholas, the show got 20 nominations. And you got nominated. And I went, what? Oh, your mom My told My mom you? called me. And I was like... Wow. I had the chills because I was like... I dreamed on being, you know, or whatever, making it, being on the television. I never even thought about it. But I had done some beautiful work. I mean, it was like, sort of a, like a sweet, beautiful character. And, you know, I, I, and Caruso was kind of funny. I remember when I first was on the show, I said to him, I was like nervous. And I looked up to him because he was, he was intense. He fucking brought it. I said, <laughs> I said, I said, Dave, I said, Dave, you, you, think, um, you think I'm doing okay? Because, you, know, you know, you're young, you're insecure. And he was beautiful fucking beautiful whatever you got going on don't let anybody fuck with you I said what don't let anybody mess with you I said okay so I said just listen whatever he said because of course it's beautiful he saw that I was very like naked you know uh -huh. I was I was I was kind of raw and I was doing things just like by by accident like I was telling this guy yesterday I said what's great about you know, like we were talking about actors the other day, me and my brother about Pacino. What's great about Pacino still, even though sometimes he's over the top or he strikes out or he hits a home run, is that he uh, uh, he, uh, <laughs> he he still has a bit of amateur in him. And I think you got to always still have that, that it's not so polished, that it's not so fucking, you know, that you still have that, there's a little amateur in your work that, and, and it, because it, it's good that you have that. It makes it real. Right, it makes yeah. it real. It makes it real. It makes it real. You have and I think I still mind. have retained that, you know, even though with years of doing it, I still always feel like, do I know what I'm doing? I'm not sure. I know when it's good, you know. But yeah, that, that was an amazing year, an amazing, that was an amazing time in my life. I mean, it was just, I couldn't believe it. You know, when you're in it, when you look back on it, you go, wow, did I really appreciate it? I think I did. I just was in it. And it was just, you know, and then the second time I got it was great too. I was in Mexico doing some rinky dink movie and they were like, you got nominated, you're gonna bottle this year. And I was like, wow, I was sitting next to Bruce Willis and I thought I was gonna win, you know, I was sitting next to Bruce Willis and Demi Moore and he, you know, they'd set my category, touch me, rub my shoulder and I was like, oh shit. I had a big fight with my wife that day. That was a bad day, like everything went bad. And I'm like, here I am at the Emmys and we're fucking fighting. It wasn't fair, but. <laughs> Oh my day! Don't you, know? you fucking hate that? Oh, I hated it. I hated it. But anyway, I mean, it, it was it was great being nominated. I and mean, you know, when you don't win, you just you go. It just it's like it's over. <laughs> you know, you had all this build up. It's almost better just being nominated and not hearing who wins. Yeah. Because then you don't have the letdown of like, oh shit! I thought it would have been nice to get up there and 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 go wild. You know, because I probably would have. I would have probably went wild knowing myself. I'm very. I'm very excitable. Very emotional. How'd you, get, how'd, how'd you get into this whole fucking thing? How did you get into acting? So when I, you know, when I was a kid, I sang. I, I, I was still a pretty good singer. I did ballads. They thought I was going to be like Sinatra, but I never studied. I sang in front of the, the, the relatives in high school. I was in Guys and Dolls as a senior. I was Nathan Detroit. Everybody thought oh, I was going to be like fucking. They said you're a natural. You're a natural. My brother went to school. He was doing plays, but I always had like a lot of natural ability. And then I got. I did a year as a theater major at Adelphi. I was wearing tights. I felt like a fruit, whatever. I, I didn't. F I got married to a neighborhood girl first time. Had a kid. I got stuck as a doorman. So I kind of let the dream go, even though I was. I had done a couple of little plays. Or even my brother was like, "You're a very talented guy. You, 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 you know, what are you gonna do? You're gonna be in front of this door with this hat on your head? You know, this isn't. You know, like." And I saw my brother get out of college, grad school, and his career was taken off. I went to see him do a movie called Five Corners. I'd never seen him film. He was eating a pie with his finger. And my face just like, I had, it just seemed so like, I said, wow, this seemed exciting to do. And he goes, you know, you got it. You could do this if you wanted to. So I was starting to take some classes with this guy, Modica in New York on the side. And so I was thinking about, toying about it. He was doing a movie with Spike. And, um, do the right thing which Joey loves you know put some extra mozzarella on that motherfucker put some mozzarella on that motherfucker yeah. <laughs> Yo, your, your joints are fucked up <laughs> yeah, sweet yeah. dick willie yeah. so anyway I was over there and I said man this this is a fun set maybe I come down and be an extra one night he goes yeah, you want to do that he goes I could have maybe gotten you a little part if you really I said, yeah just come I went for it was a riot scene I was a cop it was just something to do I was hanging out with him and Danny Yellow. 
I was supposed to go back, I think, on a Monday. I had to go back to work at the hotel. So I didn't go. And Spike was like, what's up? Where's your brother? I liked him. I don't know. Maybe like my face. I'm like, what the fuck did he like? I was just, you know, an extra to burn in the pizzeria. But that fall, <laughs> uh, the phone rings, 8 o'clock in the morning or some shit. And he goes, um, let's speak to Nick. I go, yeah, it's Nick. Who's this? He goes, Spike. And I'm like, Spike? Spike who? I'm thinking, what the fuck? What's Spike? You know, you have to sleep. I go, Spike Lee goes, yeah, what's up? And I said, hey. I'm like thinking, I fucking I barely know this Spike Lee guy. I go, what's up? He goes, how you doing, man? I go, good. I go, how'd you get my number? He goes, from your brother. He goes, would you like to do some looping for do the right thing? I don't know what looping is. I have no fucking idea. I go, yeah, I'll loop. I'll loop. He goes, all right, so come tomorrow. We'll do some looping for do the right thing. So he had me scream racial obscenities for like three hours and told me, you know, I could say Molignan, whatever. I could go, I could go wild. And I did. I went nuts. I mean, I, I said everything. Everything, you know, derogatory. But you know, my, my affection for black people is huge. Because you're Italians and blacks. we got a big love affair. Love, hate, whatever. But anyways, um, he loved it. He was on the ground laughing. Hysterical. Now, what did he tell your brother? This is my he called time. my brother and he said, I brought that boy into the studio. And he went off. And he meant it. <laughs> and he meant it. He goes, Spike's a big fan of yours. I said, yeah. And you know, I go, that's great. You know, because it's like the, Spike gave a lot of people. The great thing about Spike was he recognized talent, raw talent. People, not only people like my brother who was studied, but people like Rosie Perez, people from the street. You know, Spike, no, he had a good Steve eye. Steve White. Yeah. It's and that movie was very Martin good. Lawrence. Yeah. Martin Lawrence. You know, uh, right. Spike had an eye. And he saw that I was a raw fucking kid. What, what, so he said, I got to tell you something. You got a big fan in this guy. And I said, yeah. He goes, Spike's writing a new movie. Mo Better Blues. And he goes, he's writing a part for me. And he's writing a role for you. I said, what? He's writing a role for me? What do you mean? He goes, he's writing a role for you and me. In this new movie, we're gonna play two Jewish brothers. I said, "Really?" I couldn't get over it. I was like, "I'm gonna be." I was a fucking nervous wreck because I'm like, "Wow, I'm gonna be in a movie with you know, my brother Denzel." We played these two guys, the Flatbush brothers, Mo and Josh, and we, we did a good job, you know. And it was, a, it was, it was really like a wild experience for me. And then I had to go back to the hotel, but I said, "Man," and Spike goes, "I'm doing another movie, Jungle Fever, and you're gonna play like this kid Joey Farmer." So I was starting to like build some confidence with him. Then I got an agent. Then I started doing a couple of little things on my own. I did a few little plays. I got a little TV work. Uh, so I was building up. I was doing it like two, three years on the side. And I'd go back to the hotel. I'd still be the doorman. People were noticing me. Matt Dillon's one day goes, yo, you're a good actor. What are you doing here? I go, this is my job. I got to eat. He goes, hey, but you're good, man. I saw you in some shit. Oh, nice. Yeah, so... You know, I was th I was building up, and then finally, when I got the NYPD Blue, I figured, you know what? Fuck it. I've been out here with this hat on my head for ten years. I'm either gonna make a living at this or not. So I I resigned. I resigned that like you know after ten years because I had been doing the acting. It was really become my focus because I'd be in front of the hotel. I wasn't even. I would be just talking to people. I was more. I was socialized, and I was always you know he's an actor. He thinks he's an actor. And I was like, fuck you. You watch. You see. People were. People were noticing. They were like, I was in Newsweek. And they were like, you're back on the door. You're my hero. You're in Newsweek. And you're opening the door the next day. You know, because I had a good part in the Jungle Fever. So even Spike thought, he said, I almost think you still stole the fucking movie, you and Sam Jackson. Because I was really like... I was, no, tremendous. I was possessed. Tremendous. Even my brother guys. goes, you, you are guys focused. Were tremendous. You're focusing that movie. I had the Sergio Tacchini suit, the white fucking decks. I was really like, because I was hungry. And you know, I was so hungry to do it. The Gator Dance. Yeah. The gator. But let me tell you something. It's funny because... Spike was good back then. I wouldn't watch Do the Right Thing. Do you know that? I would not watch it. Good movie. I was like, I'm not watching that fucking movie. Right, right. And I had a course at the University of Colorado, a sociology course. And he gave us three movies. He goes, this is this movie is a really great example of what goes on in that neighborhood. Watch it. And I watched this movie like... You know, like when somebody invites you to something, you don't want to do it. Right. Yeah. I watched yeah. this movie and I was blown the fuck away good movie. because I heard spick, I heard nigger, I heard white, I heard all this shit. But at the end of the day, these motherfuckers all live together. Yeah. And that was the story. Yeah. But at the end of the day, with the, all the niggas spick yeah. and fuck you, Puerto Rican, the, ending was a the Koreans, the ending, the ending, the ending was weird. weird. It's a little weird. But yeah. it still <laughs> tells you, and it's yeah. so funny that about. Ten years ago, 
I there's a saying in that movie, the guy that went on to fucking do a thousand things. He's the guy that's the black militant. And at the end of every comment say, Mookie, stay black. And I loved it. I fell in love with that. Like, stay black. Yeah. How fucking great yeah. is that? Like, I stay know. white. St it was 1987 yeah. or something. Stay and black. he's like, stay black. And yeah. I'm like, that is the best saying. And one day I'm at somewhere and it's a room full of black people. And I go, all right, Sky, see you later. And on the way out, I go, stay black. And it was like somebody scratched the record player. Yeah. Because it, <laughs> yeah. the room shut up for two seconds. Then they nearly fucking died. Yeah. And just that reaction, I said, I'm going to use that every day. That's why I love that <laughs> yeah. movie so much. You're right. You're right. It's that, such a beautiful film. It's a beautiful film. To the, the ending is flawed. I love the fucking movie, but, you know, the ending is, is a bit flawed. You know what I mean? It, but it does make you feel different things. So in that way, you know, it gets a little political, the ending, with the throwing the thing through the window and the guy getting choked his fucking lungs out. You know... Uh, but you know you can understand that escalated and but the whole movie was but the movie's dynamite it's what I live through every day and I laugh at the end of the it's day it's stereotypes but it's, it's true it's stereotypes but it's when true. he takes John to tour into the hallway yeah that's and classic. he says to him who's your favorite basketball player <laughs> yeah Michael Jordan who's right. your favorite Prince Eddie Murphy Springsteen yeah. Prince Springsteen Ooh. Yeah. Goes, so how do you sit here and it's like me I'll sit there all day and go these fucking yeah. niggas <laughs> these fucking chicks these fucking this but, you but at the end of the day I got a fucking Richard Pryor poster on my wall right at so you're not day, really that pregnant I will suck Julius no. Irving's dick right I will suck it right. in the ABA right. I would have sucked <laughs> his dick yeah you understand me and you're saying who taught me how to fucking dance Joe Tex and Earth Wind and Fire right who the soul train what the fuck so so when I say nigger, if you take it seriously, you're a fucking you're moron. A moron. Because you're a moron. we that's how we that's grew how up. Talk. That chick on the court. Where, right. where are you going? I'm going to the chink store. Yeah. But then you go to the chink store and yeah. you're going to the guy, hey, how you hey. doing? Hey, what's going on? I like when the Chinese guy goes, yeah. me black. Me you black. Ain't black. You, you ain't black. Me <laughs> black. Because <laughs> this is what it's right. like. Who yeah. cares what comes out of your fucking Make mouth? the Chinese alone. If I'm striking you, that's hatred. Right. But who cares at right. the end of the day? Right, right. Who it's cares? True. Unless who you're in New York, you don't understand that. You don't understand that. that. You understand and that. That. it's like all day, we pop these fucking niggas, yeah. pop these, this, yeah. pop the, And Me, at the end of the day. Meanwhile, you want to bang them. You meanwhile, you want to attract them. How can you them? be a racist yeah. if I cry? You're not and really a racist. Houston. How can I be a racist? You're not. This is what I tell people all the time. I'm not a fucking racist. This is just the way it's you survive. It's bullshit. It's what you're taught. It's what you're, you're taught. taught. Don't go out with a black chick. Or don't go out with a Chinese chick. It's all in your fucking head. And then you get past that and you go, it's bullshit. We're all the same. Who gives really a fuck? It's bullshit. You just... If it wasn't for Soul Train, I'd be a fucking robot But that's around. why that movie's funny. It's very, it's and very that's the funny. thing about it. That's why that teacher said no. it's the biggest sociology <laughs> lesson. Yeah, I saw that movie with get. Spike and John with all black people. <laughs> <laughs> fucking great. <laughs> oh my God, my, my <laughs> goodness. <laughs> oh, the oh, the laugh. This is what it's all about. This is what podcasting Holy is about, shit. bitches. <laughs> and it's so funny how I use another thing. Felicia, how many fucking times have I said to you, don't forget about me? Yes, a lot. You so know where I got that line time. from? Way before I met Nick. Oh, Way before I know. Anything. To live and die in L.A. To live and die in L.A. Uh, John Couture. Uh, hey, yeah. When he goes me. to visit, he comes out, he's in Those jail. Those are lines. You These know, are lines that have changed life. Head, head, head. He yeah. has a K.O. Pectin bottle yeah, at goes, the visitation. Hey, don't forget he about me. He knocks in the glass. I know, he's great in that. Don't forget about me. Don't the guy forget goes, about me. We're working on getting you out. He goes, right. yeah. And the check is in the mail. Yeah. And I promise not to come in your mouth. Yeah. I mean, the lines are yeah. fucking. You I sit know. there. That's Last great, week, I was looking at amazing. the 40th Good year of the Godfather. Good movie. And this really, I left there that day going, wow, did I just read that? How great was the that? The second movies? greatest quote voted by the American Film Institute. Number one is, frankly, I don't give a damn. But number two is, I'm going to make him a one-off he can't refuse. <laughs> 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 Which is a beautiful line. Uh -huh. I'm gonna make, and if you watch Marlon say it, it's not yeah. like, I'm going to make him, I'm going to make that motherfucker. No, but no. the way he did it. The way he did the it. delicacy, you know. Yeah. He, he fixes his tie and he goes, I'm going to make him an offer he can't refuse. You know, he was so refined when you watch him. That was what was beautiful about him versus like these other mob movies where the guys are like kind of, all these kind of Mama Luke guys. But Brando had this, he was, you know, you know what it was about Brando? He was macho and he was vulnerable. He had both things. He was very like vulnerable, you know, and he was very, he could be very macho too early in his life, you know. But you saw it. That's why he was, that's why he's the best. He's the best. 
as much as I love all the other guys, you know, De Niro, Pacino, Duval, for me, when I watch acting, it's fucking Marlon. Marlon is, Marlon is the best. I tell people all the time. He's a beautiful you can save guy. Save your fucking money on beautiful acting guy. and just rent the Godfather. He's a sexy and motherfucker. Just go too. into different scenes and watch what he does, and then you get the backstory. You watch him. I watch him in On the Waterfront. Watch him oh in The Last Tango. Watch him in, in The Godfather. Last Tango, oh my God. That's that's like acting on another level. Yeah, he was on another that's level. Like on that a, that's, a, that's like your, 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 your socks, are, your shoes are blown off, and you're sitting there with your mouth open. You go, ah, you know, that's like going to school. When you watch great acting, I tell people, watch it. Watch it, because you could fucking learn if you got a brain in your head. You don't have to go to an acting class. That's bullshit. I tell people the Godfather. You what? Godfather. Watch until your face turns green. Brilliant. You'll learn how to do everything. And they're all everything. great. They're let me, all let me ask you this: like, who have you personally ever worked with? Were you, uh, were you ever a little starstruck with someone? Oh sure. I mean, sure. who who would be the number one where you were just? I like, tell oh. you, I, I got a little starstruck with uh, with Uncle Bert when I was in the scene with Bert Reynolds because I fucking yeah you know, watched Bert Reynolds as a kid, man. And I've seen him in all these fucking movies. And he's kind of like my... I call him Uncle Bert. He reminds me of my Uncle Mikey. And I was like looking at his mustache. And it's like, holy shit. I'm with Burt Reynolds. You got to get past that. I mean, you have those experiences where you go, wow. Holy shit. Am I really with... I'm really with Uncle Bert? You know my I mean? trailer was next to Nick's in New Mexico. And in the morning, if you went outside, I would smoke pot in the front of the trailer. And Burt Reynolds would walk up to me and go, what are you doing? <laughs> it was something... <laughs> That, you know, I knew that this this podcast, you know, I wanted to have Nick on because he's hysterical. He's always made me laugh. If I consider friends I have out here in L.A., it's Nick. But one of the things, like for me, getting the longest yard was so great, but so bad in many ways. But it was with the, the stories with Nick that nobody will ever know. Like that you watch the movie and you're like, that must have been a great movie. Nobody, I mean, I remember the wrestlers, when they would tell the staff that if they didn't work by nine, they were going to go out and get beers. You imagine going to people saying, <laughs> it's a wild experience. if we're not working yeah. by nine, nine, not 12, not one, yeah. nine, we're people gonna go getting, out and get beers. People getting high. People they went and got blenders and, and they would send the PAs for cocktails. Are and, you serious? Oh my God, not Goldberg, but. Is that normal? Kevin Nash. No, that's not, not normal. like this. Normal movie. Not like this. Really? Water girls, Adam had all these water girls to service the men. With whatever. bikinis and umbrellas really? so the sun yeah. wouldn't get you. <laughs> I don't sound that's like, why I stayed to myself with all that testosterone. I wouldn't even go in the shower with all those guys because they're huge, and I wanted to keep my little bit of you know macho sanity. Because they're like, Nick, you're gonna shower with us? I was like, No way. I said, You know, I'm not walking around with you guys, and you know they're bigger than life, and they're hanging by the, you know. I'm like, I'm not going in there. It was too intimidating. I needed to have my own little, you know. I'm not gonna shower with Michael Irvin and all no, these guys. It's, uh, it's you really know, it's weird. just too much. It's really weird. You know, but I'll tell you what, Robert De Niro hired me for a miniseries to play Sammy the Bull. And that was, a, that was really exciting because my agent goes, Robert De Niro wants you to be Sammy the Bull. I said, are you sure? I was like in disbelief. He goes, no, it's coming from De Niro. I said, tell me again. He goes, Robert De Niro. And I said, no, tell me again. He said, I'm telling you, motherfucker, it's him. I said, okay, I'm just fucking checking because I was supposed to be in this movie. It never got made called Out on My Feet about an Italian boxer, Vinnie Curto. He's a character. Character. And, 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 and they're going to give it to Mark Wahlberg. And I said, "Why? how come Mark Wahlberg? Uh, that's me. That's me. But De Niro had the audition tape, and he was carrying it in his pocket, I heard. And I heard he was saying, I got the bull. I got the bull right here. Meaning me. I didn't fucking know he even liked me. I knew he liked my brother, and then I get this call, and I couldn't believe it. I had to ask NYPD Blue. I said, could you guys let me out to do this? And they would go, what part? I go, Sammy the Bull. But which part? I go, to play Sammy the Bull. You really? I said, yeah, motherfucker. I mean, it's from De Niro. <laughs> could I go do this? You know. But when I got the call from him, he used to call me. To, he would watch dailies. I would chuckle because they go, oh, Robert De Niro's on the phone for you. And I'd be like, you know, I wouldn't know what to say to this guy. But he was funny because he was like a family member. He would repeat himself like, he'd say, yeah, it's, it's good, Nick. So I go, it's good? He goes, yeah, it's all good. So it's good. Yeah, it's good. So it's good, right? So I go, well, what do you think? He goes, ah, he goes yeah, you never know. I go, yeah, but you know more than me. I'm asking one of the guys. <laughs> but then he would call me like, like, like little things like, hey, Nick, watch the recoil. I go, huh? I'm looking for an acting note. You know, when you shoot the gun, watch the recoil. Oh, okay, Bob. You know, he goes, and hey, well, watch uh, the uh, Tom's accent. You know, 
I go, oh, it's his friend Tom Zeisman. He's from Michigan. He's Italian. I go, what am I going to do with his accent? He goes, watch his accent, Nick. There's nothing I can do, Bob. He's your friend, you know. I don't want to offend yeah, him. Yeah. You, know, you, you, you know, you hired him. What am, he's from Michigan. What am I going to do? But he'd be like, yeah, his fucking cufflinks too aren't right. He'd look at little things like that. Little things. Yeah, yeah. Sure, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. I live yeah. next door to the girl that, that played exciting. the, the dancer sure. in Casino. And she told me that scene took 16 hours because they would shoot it and he would come back and talk to Scorsese yeah. and then an assistant would come and tell you stand two inches to that's I what mean, my brother told me he said it's, nothing it's, is too boring for this guy this that, is just amazing you know, that, he goes I realize why the guy is, he's not the most naturally talented but he could probably outwork in, in his heyday I mean now he's more commercial but in his heyday like you know if he if he had to put like a glass down you know he could like a, wait a minute let me do it you know I do it like that now let, let me do another one. He could do it like a hundred times. The obsession. The, and if you could see it in his work, it's in his work. Like when he goes, do you hear me? Did you hear me? You hear what I said? You heard what I said? You heard? That's him. That's who you are always comes out. There's parts of you that come out in every character. You're not that character, but you use yourself in, the, in acting. That's the biggest thing. You always put yourself in it. It's not that it's you, but that obsessive, my, because my brother has that. My brother's a, uh, you know, he like folds clothes and I do something like with my wallet. Like when he holds, he does a funny thing. He, they're very obsessed people in my family. Very obsessed. And De Niro has that. Like he'll, he'll he doesn't even know. Like you're having a conversation with him. He'll go, okay, yeah. <laughs> Open and close his wallet over yeah, and over. Yeah, but you know, he, he does, he's like, you're like not even there. He's like. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, Stop yeah, molesting yeah, yeah. that wallet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and he turns around and goes, yeah. you, know, you know what I'm talking about, Nick? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Like, oblivious to what he did. I've seen him wash lettuce, rewash it, and then yeah, fucking crazy things, obsessive things. We have a brother who's not that well, but he's really obsessive. But my brother is too. You know, he'll say to me, you say the same thing over and over. You are, I'm like, I say the same? We do repeat ourselves. But I'm like, you are, you know. And when he met De Niro, his wife told me, well, when he she direct he directed him, he goes, that guy is fucking crazier than me. You know, at the end of the movie, <laughs> he directed him in this movie after my mother died. Uh, it was a spy, it was an FBI movie. Yeah, I forget the name, The Good Shepherd. So I guess John told him that he had to be done at a certain day. And, 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 and Bob said, you know, everybody was kind of like deathly afraid of him. My brother respects him. He loves De Niro. I love him. But he's like not afraid of him. Because John's like, you know, because so John said, yeah, I'm done today. This is my last day. And De Niro was like, I guess he wanted them to stay some more, so he went to see him. He said, "So you're done?" He goes, "Yeah, I'm done." <laughs> so you're done, like a like a little kid that I you know, like, couldn't get his yeah, candy. Yeah. So you're actually done. He goes, "I'm done." But if you need me, Bob, I'll come back. So you're done. Yes, I'm done. I'm finished. But if you need me, if you need me, <laughs> I'll come back. He goes, "Okay." Okay, guys. <laughs> if I need him. But he had to tell him about me, like, I can imagine that scene. I'm probably not even doing it justice. Well, I think it's you fucking, are, because I can imagine it's it. It's fucking yeah. brilliant. So you're done. Yes, I'm done. So you're leaving. Yes, I'm going to leave. So you're done. Yeah, I'm done. So you're going to leave. Yes, I'm leaving. But if you need me, if you need me, I'll come back for you, Bob. You know what I mean? I'll be back. Okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like that exercise I did, this guy, Modica. There's a San, Sandy Meisner in acting class. It's a great exercise. But it would be so funny because he would sometimes give you the words. You, you'd have to look at the other person. The person looks at you and you put your attention on them. And it always would start out something like this. So, so you're angry. Yes, I'm angry. You're angry. Yes, I'm angry. You're angry. Yes, I'm angry. You're upset. Yes, I'm upset. You're upset. I'm upset. You're upset. Yes, you're upsetting me. Yes, I know I'm upsetting you. You're upset. Yes, I'm fucking upset. That's why I don't go to acting class. No, this was a great class because sometimes you didn't, if you went to your head and if you went to your head, Bob would go, Dolly. He had a switch blade. He was Robin Modica. That's not it. That's bullshit. You went to your head. Did you look at this man? Did you not look at him? Did you, you have to stay truthful to what's going on. I've seen it get physical. 
Did you not see this man? Sometimes, if you didn't know the word, but you were feeling it, he'd write it on a pad and go, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Yeah, it's wow. funny. But, yeah. but it had to be what you're feeling. And if you really did the exercise, you could have an out of body. But if you went to your head and tried to manipulate it, go, that's not it. That's bullshit. Like one time he'd say, go outside the door. Think about why you're coming here. And when you know why you're coming, then come and knock on the door. So one time this guy was like, knocked on the door. The girl's doing an exercise. And he's like, hello. And, and, and the girl was like crying. What do you know? She was uh, whatever. She was upset. And she was like, you know, and, and, and he wasn't listening. Open the door. You know, he was like, just like not listening that she was fucking upset about something. <laughs> so Bob goes to her the door and spit in his face <laughs> <laughs> and it took that to wake this fucking wackadoo up when she spit in his face he was like that's what it took motherfucker <laughs> you know he was pretty harsh because I mean I know I talked to Paul Savino one time he goes his daughter maybe studied with Modica and he goes yeah that motherfucker is nuts I was like yeah but I love him because it was like my father teaching acting it was harsh, but it was fucking great. And when you did the exorcist, but a lot of times, you know, you try to teach kids and they try to get slick and manipulating, but you have to be, you have to, because it's moment to moment. And that's like acting. You, it teaches you, you're not that you have to always look at the person, right? but it teaches you to stay in the moment. Because when you're there, that's when interesting things can happen. Not manipulating. There's a lot of guys that try to manipulate. They're manipulating. And you can see it in their fucking work. Sometimes you can sense it too. Because I've worked with guys like that. They always try to like fucking, you know, it's got to be about them. Where it's not just about the fucking, let's have, a, let's have a great scene. Then we have a better experience. You know, be secure. If you're good, then it'll make me good. When I first met you, it was really weird. It's so weird how your life works. I was on NYPD Blue, and I liked the show as a fan. As a guest star? Yeah, I I, uh, I, I did something in a bookie hall or something like that, and it was really funny that... What year? Was I there or I was gone? No, nah, you were gone. And It's yeah. funny that I, I watch it. I watched it as a fan, and I watched you, and I never thought about it, but I really got into the episode when you were going to hit up on the lesbian chick and whatever, she became a lesbian or whatever. Yeah. Then, yeah. And then I met you and we're in The Longest Yard. And I watched you do, do, do dramatic work. Right. And in The Longest Yard, I tell you, there were days you were fucking hysterical. I mean, you know, it's funny that they, they brought in all these guns for The Longest Yard, but it was the inner nucleus who really hit home. Like, they were watching us going, what the fuck are these guys doing? I mean, Chris Rock is always going to be Chris Rock. Right. Tracy Morgan was fucking hilarious, you yeah, know? Yeah, it was funny in that movie. And it was uh, funny. it's just really weird that you know, I felt very insecure on the set until the first day. Mm -hmm. And then it was on, you know. And, right. And like I said, that movie was bad and good for me because it made people aware of me, but it also, I didn't get along with a lot of personalities on mm -hmm. the movie, and, and it backfired against me. Mm -hmm. But for me, coming from garbage, being in prison, and just being a comedy store stand-up, it meant the world. That yeah. I was, you know, I look at that movie now, and I don't watch it because I hate watching myself. But for two to three seconds, I'm like, you know what? Whatever happens today, if I get killed, I was in that movie with Burt Reynolds, who I seen the original. The Union State said, I'm a, right. you, know, I, uh, wow. you know, I was there with Adam Sandler, who I, I never even liked. Never even fucking liked Adam Sandler until I got to the table read and the motherfucker got my bags and carried yeah. them up the stairs with flip flops yeah. on. Yeah. And that's what people don't understand that they don't see. Right. The, the biggest thrill for me, and I told Felicia, <laughs> and you could, it was the table read. Yeah. When fucking what's her name came in and she goes, Am I the only fucking woman in this movie? What's the Cloris Leachman? Leachman. Cloris Leachman. Yeah. And she pulled up her shirt and showed these fucking udders that were tits <laughs> just to let everybody know what time it was in the room like fuck you motherfuckers and there I am at this thing I'm a fucking I'm doing blow I'm barely paying my fucking rent and I'm sitting next to fucking the guy Luther 
for 48 hours. You know, come out to play, eh? And <laughs> fucking right. just warriors. I'm sitting next to fucking Romanowski who beat the fuck out of somebody with a football helmet. And I'm sitting next to Michael Irvin to my left that was fucking yeah, hookers and strippers. Eclectic, eccentric and, bunch of people. It was something that we're, seen we're in this assembled. room. <laughs> and all of a sudden they bring in food and I'm hungry. And I got, listen, yeah. no reason to lie. I had ten dollars in my pocket, five for cigarettes and five for whatever, and I had uh, a little bit of weed. And and all of a sudden they're like, "Well, you going to the airport? Are we going to LAX? No, you're going to Van Nuys, and you're flying." And it was me, Bob Sapp, that fucking gorilla oh, of a man, and day. Dalip, seven yeah. foot one, who was eating eighteen eggs for fucking breakfast. Eighteen, oh, really? eighteen fucking hard boiled eggs plus bread. And then he go to the thing and they give him chicken cutlets. He eat fucking ninety chicken cutlets. Wow. And all of a sudden you fly down there. I check in, there's a table at this gorgeous hotel, there's a little Indian guy playing a flute. And here I am, a piece of shit, I was just break, breaking into houses 10 years ago, and here I am, and all of a sudden they give me an envelope. And in the envelope, there's rental car keys and $800 cash. Fucking per damn rental per car. Per damn rental car. Best. Are you fucking... It was the they best. didn't even ask for my license. I didn't no. have a fucking license. That's Adam Sandler, bitch. I know. Okay, they didn't say, can we have a copy of your license? Who's your now insurer? Now it's fucking local hire who got... You get Fuck nothing. you. I mean, and here I am in a rental car with $800 yeah. in my pocket. Rental car. Sending money Santa to Terry Bay, to buy groceries yeah, and cat food. And, and we're drinking in this hotel. Here's Buffalo this, burgers. Here's this fucking Michael Jordan. Michael Irvin would walk in this hotel with white people, with no shirt on. Women. I saw him from my balcony one time. I said to him, "I said, Mike, I saw you in uh, getting in the limo with like you know eighteen girls." He goes, "You saw that? Yeah, my, my secretary. My secretary." I said, "Yeah, yeah. Don't worry, Mike. I don't give a shit." And we were in New Mexico. <laughs> my, my secretary. And he's having parties every week. And Tracy Morgan is hilarious. And we're having these parties, and Tracy Morgan kept saying, Adam Sandler, you see that motherfucker right there? That's oh. my motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. That motherfucker yeah. got me that a butler. And then I'm dying because Adam Sandler is such a genius because he wouldn't even pay attention to Tracy. Like, yeah, yeah, Tracy, right. whatever. Just let him go. Yeah. Just let him go. Yeah. What the yeah. fuck yeah. is yeah. wrong with people? Yeah. Well, yeah. he's crazy. Just let him fucking right. go. Let him, let him the fuck who the go. fuck are you? And that's what the beauty of that. I learned so much about yeah. comedy because I learned, I learned why. <coughs> uh, yeah. And trains, planes, and automobiles. Why Steve Martin played the bro he did. Once I understood that. Yeah. You know, there's rumors that when you do work with other comics, if you say a line, the star of the movie fucking steals it. You know what it is to go into your job and look at a scene and walk you, in and Adam's like, Listen, you know what I like about Adam? We're going to rewrite this he, motherfucker. He, if, you're, if you're funny and you got something, he embraces it. He embraces he, it, he, man. He's not a guy. Go, he, bitch. He's, he's not a guy. He came up to me after the first in the tree out scene. And I didn't really know him, hardly knew him at all. And he said, dude, you're going to be funny in this. And, he, and I said, yeah, thank you, really? So I just, I came in with an idea. The character was nothing on paper. He blew that up for me. He's the one that said, have Nick say this. Have Nick. Every time he handed me the ball, I was ready because I had a character in my head and I grounded him and that's why it was funny. It was only funny because it was like I grounded it in something. I had like a real character and then he enhanced it. He saw that and he fucking developed it on the fly. It was a nothing, it was nothing. character yeah. that it's became amazing. one of the characters in the movie you remember. But Adam, he saw that and to his credit, you know, and I'm, I, I, you know, he really let me go, and and uh, you know, he developed a beautiful, uh, a memorable. Yeah, you, know, you can almost fucking take that Brucey guy and spin him off, because kids love the guy. They love the guy for whatever reason. He's one of the guys in the movie that just stood out. But I have to give him the props because he gave me the ammunition. You were, you remember, right? You know, he'd always. And then the punch lines or whatever, he, he fucking always, hand, always, he hand the ball. Man. Very generous that way, you know what I mean? Not like with some guys you know, they got you can't be funnier than no, that. No, no, like, I felt that one you. time in an audition with Billy Crystal. He goes, Good. can you improvise with me? I go, yeah. He goes, you're funny. I said, yeah, oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm funny. Said, you're funny. I'm funny. Let's do it. And he's like, and then they said, yeah, he loves you. We want you to come back. I said, I get it. I fucking see it. You know what I mean? Some guys don't want to be, you know, they get a little intimidated yeah. or whatever. This guy might take my thunder or whatever. I Not never him. felt that way with Adam. If you're a funny guy, whoever you are, 
Sandler loves comedy. He, he likes it. talent. Well, let actors. me ask you this then: What is it like when you're doing a scene with your brother? Like, like is that? Uh, is it's it- exciting because he's intense, and you know he's fucking creative, and you know you got to up your game. But 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 it's very, it's it's stimulating because he's a stimulating guy. And that's the way I learned to work. I learned a lot from Adam and other guys. I shot this little pilot now I've been tinkering with for two years, this doorman thing. And it's pretty damn good now. And I'm starting to like maybe get some heat with it. I shot it. I directed it. But I learned a lot working with guys. like Because comedy-wise, I had a few pilots years ago that just missed getting on the air. I came off a drama. People didn't know. I wasn't like a stand-up. But now, because of those movies, there are people that don't know me from the acting world. They go, oh, that guy's a comedian. I go, no, I'm not a comedian. But they maybe know me from those movies. Right. So they think I'm like Joey or something, but I'm not. You know, some people say, yeah, you're a funny guy, but you're a fucking... Did you ever... I go, no, I, I'm not a stand-up. I don't pretend to be. I, you know, But I'm just saying that he's a guy that I learned a lot from, and I learned a lot from my brother. You learn a lot from a lot of people. Then you just take it, you make it your own. I got my own fucking style, my own sensibility, and I, I know what... I try to keep... Like a lot of times, you know, Adam would say, well, you know, say it like this. And I'm like, yeah, but let me do it. I'm going to still deliver it my way. You know what I mean? I, I, I you know, I, I still, so I keep some of my own, you know, and I'd say, I'd see he'd laugh and crack up behind the camera. A lot of times he would watch off camera. He'd like, well, Adam's going to go watch it. He'd love it. it. He'd, he'd love, love it. it. He and loved he's your all that shit. He'd be giggling. He'd come yeah, over. Yeah, it's it amazing. Good, great it's dude. Amazing Spike was like that. He would give you, I would say comically, I like that about him. He gives you, he'd give you that, you know, uh, he give you that that little you know extra like dude that was great that was funny you know obviously you know it's their thing so you got to kind of give them you know not that they always have the right you know they want what they want what they think is funny but what I think is funny sometimes may not always have the same taste but but I I think it was great I think I think you know just comically being around people like him and his mind to see the way it works is you know it's he's a pretty freaking uh, fascinating one, uh, one day we were at the we were in Santa Fe New Mexico and my balls always pop out of my underwear <laughs> for some reason always <laughs> just pop out those whitey tighties I've seen them and yes. I had a pair of shorts on and I had just been there about maybe eight days I was still pretty the first five days I didn't work I was just in my hotel room they were doing like uh, just uh, shots but the second week we went to work and I think like the fourth day, I didn't say much. I was, I was just happy to be there. I didn't want them to send me home. And I'm sitting there minding my own business, and I see people walking by and giggling. I don't know what the fuck they're giggling at. And all of a sudden, Adam Sandler, I'll never forget, walks over with his little sunglasses on, stands next to me. What's up, baby? Nothing. <laughs> What's up with you? Nothing. He goes, hey, uh, your speed bag is hanging out. I go, what? And he goes, you're a fucking speed bag. You're a nutsack. What do you want to do? <laughs> and this is, you know, the, and he's speed giggling. <laughs> he's telling these women to shut the fuck up. He's loving it. Uh-huh. He's loving this ball sack out. And for, the, throughout that whole shoot, he'd come up to me very quietly, not in an embarrassing way, and go, how's the speed bag doing? And then we get to Paramount, because we shot six weeks. We get to Paramount. One day I got a knock on the door. Doom, 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 doom. Sandla wants to see you. I'm like, oh, no. He found out about the shirt. He found out about what we called. We insulted the guy with the sandals, something, you know, because they would have these calls for us, and we'd go there for an, like 545. Sure. You know, we clipped the shirts, and everybody oh. clipped the pants. So I thought they were going to be mad at us. I go to his little office. They got a basketball court. There's people with skateboards. You know, if you ever go to Adam Sandler's office. Oh, it's Sony. Yeah, it's Sony. It's fucking great. Yeah, it's they awesome. got skateboards. Yeah. And it's a kid's house. You know, it's yeah. a kid's house. And I sit down, and he's very serious. He goes, listen, this afternoon before you leave, I want you to do me a favor. They'll pay you. I want you to shoot something for Nick Swanson. And I go, really? And I go, what? And he goes, I just want to shot your ball sack. And I'm thinking, you're <laughs> fucking... And he's serious. He's serious. His mother's in the office. She's giggling, you know. And he's like, yeah, they'll come get you in a little while. He goes, go back to your room. I go back to... I'm thinking this is a fucking joke. An hour later, I get a knock on the door, and it's a kid with a cart. And he goes, get in. Come on, let's go. It took me to, like, Studio 13. They had the lights set up <laughs> under my waist and everything. Oh, Adam's it. like, I got a makeup girl coming for your nutsack. I mean, he was hysterical. And they put that video of, in one of Nick Swanson's. But that was his sense of humor. Yeah. yeah. He's got a fucking yeah, a sense fucking of crazy humor. humor. Where somebody else would come up to me, an executive producer, he and gone, you're disgusting. Shit. You should send you home. That's sexual harassment. Fucking Adam Sandler yeah. was loving it. He loved it. 
loves Dude, that I seen shit. him at a UFC and he came up to me and said, How's the speed bag? You better put it away. Somebody will kick it here. I mean, that's how funny <laughs> that's that funny. guy is. Yeah. But that's yeah. what, you yeah. know, and it was, uh, it was a great experience meeting these guys and just the fucking stories. Like just, just the Burt Reynolds. That was a special movie. When he brought Dom DeLuise to the set. He brought Dom DeLuise oh, to the that fucking had set. Been pretty Are you fucking amazing. kidding me? Yeah. He would tell. I remember one day he took me and you or somebody, or me and Lobo, and he just told stories about him and Clint Eastwood when he was an actor in New York and he was what's his name, Rip Torn's roommate, and Rip Torn brought a piece to an audition to an Ali Kazan audition and threatened Ali Kazan, <laughs> and Ali Kazan threw him out. He goes, "This is my fucking roommate." Wow. You know what it is to hear those stories? Tough guys. And you fucking yeah. macho guys. And if you watch the scene when I'm tackling him, there's a a thing where we're starting to get better and better. There was a day when I had to tackle him. That guy was old. But let me tell you something. He was fucking strong. Yeah. He oh, was yeah? fucking he strong. He was a real He was a real ball player. You see an original? Well, he's a stud, man. He's a fucking... He's a fucking hey, listen, stud. we were kids. Listen, you watched the beginning of The Longest Year. When that motherfucker yeah. walks into the bar after he throws a car in the fucking lake and he's got that warm-up stuff. puts stud. that fucking girl against the wall Are you kidding and chokes me? her. And chokes her? You that's couldn't do that fantastic. shit. That's fantastic. You can't do that today. You can't do that today. <laughs> but that's Smacks awesome. her. Well, <laughs> it's a little rough. Uh, you know, but, it's probably a good, a good reason why. No, but it was just something about Burt Reynolds at the time. Yeah, like, you yeah. don't, when I was sitting there. I'm saying that machismo. You yeah. know what I mean? I was sitting when there. When men were men. See, today, we're like wimps. We can't, we can't come there. That's why I say I'm a cheap replica of my dad. That fucking generation, those guys were men. They were fucking men. I mean, you know, today it's like fucking, we're like girls. You know. They giggle and shit. I, you know, man, I try to be a fucking man every Sexy, fucking day. Sexy, man. Fucking guy, I'm a kind of Marlboro man, man. That's what I'm saying. I'm in the scene with fucking Bert. And he was like, you got it, kid. I said, yeah. I said, yeah, you think so, Bert? And he was like, yeah, I know. We either got it or you got it. Thanks. I said, man, fucking Bert. <laughs> Gave me a stamp, wow. right? I remember one day we're shooting a scene when we're all eating turkey or something. Yeah. And uh, it's a big scene and they had cranberry sauce and chickens and all this. And I remember that uh, Goldberg brought in a bunch of kids from Maury Povich's show that were like sickly or didn't have good homes. And that was a day I got like a half a pound of weed and brought it to the set. And it wasn't just regular weed. It was this shit. So it was me, Nelly, and we're all smoking on this motherfucker. They're all high. Stone to the gills, and we're eating this food. <laughs> we ate so much food, they're like, guys, stop it already. We don't have any backup. We ate everything, the chicken, the cranberry sauce, all those fucking scenes. <laughs> yeah. We were just killing them. You ate up all the props. <laughs> ate them up. And they were like, what are you going to do now? Please don't. Please don't. Nelly was good in the movie. Nelly was Nelly tremendous. Was good Nelly I love was, that scene by the book. That's a good scene. Yeah, Nelly was, and he was such a. When you see somebody like Nelly, that you know, so honest. They offered him a TV. Yeah. They offered him a TV show, and they were gonna pay him all the loot, and all the loot couldn't. They even were gonna shoot a show around him in St. Louis, a scripted show. That's how much the studio wanted him. Back but, then. Back then, yeah. but his agency said two hundred thousand an episode. You make three hundred thousand. On a Friday night. Why are you going to fucking go work on TV when you make that shit on a Friday night? So that's the only reason why he didn't go on the TV. Oh, yeah? Because he was such, at the time, I don't know what he's doing on the road now. Right. But we had such a, a weird, uh, you know, even Romanowski was fucking weird to yeah. have him around. That's a murderer. He was a fucking weird That's guy. a murderer. He told me some shit. That's a murderer. He told me some shit. Yeah, he didn't he like me. Yeah. He was okay with me, but he told me I... He, yeah, he, he was... likes a lot of people. Yeah, he... Fuck, look yeah. at the tackle. Who is this? His name is... Bill uh, Romanowski. Bill Romanowski. He played for the Broncos, yeah. the Raiders, and the He's Niners. Wild, dirty player. Wild, steroids, yeah. spit in your face, yeah. gouge eyes, you know, one of Sandler these... Sandler uses him in little things. Yeah, like. Sandler, because he's fucking crazy. He's crazy him and his wife, I mean, yeah, not... Steroids. Uh, st the whole, yeah. He still oh, yeah. sends me powders like a neurological... He told me one time he's Nick, yeah, I bit people, spit on them, kick them. He told me I did whatever I had to do to Anything. get him. A linebacker's yeah. tiny. When you see him, you're like... <gasps> You're tiny, bro. Mm -hmm. But that's why. Yeah. I remember I just went to him, that scene I did when they tackled me. You no, know, it was cool, the Boz. I like the Boz. Boz was cool an education in itself. It's a cool dude. I cool, sat with him because people would go cool home guy. on the weekends. No. And, I would, and some people would stay. And he stayed one weekend. And I was intimidated at first. I mean, he played for the Seattle Fire. I was in prison when Bosworth ran. Nash was when, uh, in the movie. When what's-his-name ran over him. Remember that Monday night game when uh, yeah. with Bo Jackson? Bo Jackson. Like, I, I told him, I said, yeah. and he told me once, he goes, I was the most hated man in football. I go, yeah, 
but you were killing him because he would walk into a stadium. Why was he hated? Because he, oh, that whole persona oh, he had. the haircut. He was a genius. See, they knew he was going to be a star when he was in college. Warner Brothers gave him a three-picture deal. As soon as he signed to play pro sports. They knew he was going to be a movie star. They knew he was going to be a movie star. So they oh. gave him this huge contract with this huge deal. So now he was on the fence. So he started playing football. And he was telling us the stories. Like, even the, the, his own organization. Was he a good football player? Oh, his own organization. So what happened? Him. They considered him a rebel. Like, uh. If you don't wear, if you don't, did he get your blacklisted? Shirt, yeah, if you don't wear your shirt in your pants, oh yeah, it's a forty-five thousand yeah. dollars really? fine. Really? Like if you don't tuck your shirt in on Sundays, he would wear it out. They would take his whole game check, but he didn't give a fuck because he had ten million in the bank. You follow me? It took him all these years of therapy. He told me he woke up once and his shoulder was on a table. He had that operation. He goes, I woke up during the surgery and the fuck in my shoulder was on the table, but he was a scam. Oh what happened was this. They, when they drafted him, he had bogus shoulders, but they passed him through the insurance, and they got a Lloyd's of London insurance policy for $10 million. So they always knew. They didn't test him at the Columbine. It was all taken uh -huh. care of. So it was just a really interesting story. But the guy was a great football player, but his genius, he was the dice clay of football. When you walked into an arena, yeah. there was a 1,000 people with shirts that said, I hate the bars, and they had sticks with a face saying, I hate the bars. The only problem was he owned the company. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he owned the company. Yeah. So every time he walked into an arena, yeah, they sold stuff, but 90% of the stuff they sold was his stuff. He was, was selling. Shit? What did he, he play for, a year? He probably played for two or three years, and then Seattle, he told Seattle, me what right? Seattle did to him. The city or the organization? Hawaii, the organization. He had to move to Hawaii and go to therapy for five years. Really? Yeah, it was fucking crazy, man. I found him to be, I mean, a pretty cool dude. I don't know the guy. You know, Kevin right? Nash, you had, listen. One well, night, he had kind of a big movie career, right? Yeah, but one night Felicia, because it was it was really weird. We were the convicts and there was the guards. Mm -hmm. But it kind of broke up into that way. The guards hung out with the guards mm. and the cons hung out with the cons. Yeah, it was groups. Yeah. But the, the guards Hot were heads. fucking losers. <laughs> the guards, it was, the guards were the wrestlers, the two wrestlers. Yeah. Uh, the couple football, football players. players. So they were yeah. all guards. Yeah. These guys were drinkers. There was a little three-seat bar at the hotel. It was Fucking a Santa boozes. Fe Inn. Yeah, boozes. They broke into the bar one night because they ran out of booze. Another <laughs> night, they knocked on my door and said, give us your refrigerator. Really? At 2 in the morning. I'm like, what? And they're like, give us your refrigerator. I don't know what they were talking about. I'm like, no. And they're like, we'll give you the money for it. We need all the little bottles. <laughs> the airplane bottles. Wow. That morning I woke up and downstairs there was a table at the breakfast table and all the bottles had been turned over that they drank. Those little airplane uh -huh. bottles. It was covered. These guys did that five nights a fucking week. Wow. So I mean, you're never going to experience a movie like that. A movie that. like yeah. that. That's what people it do was, not you know, understand. It was really something. There was trays of food, Felicia. When we were in New Mexico, they would bring food to us like girls smoothies protein shakes out in the field the prison oh, the prison great. and everybody I had you know something something going on the prison that they built the set for us but the prison where it was at there was a riot there in the 70s it's called the butchers something right. a you lot can't of people even, got killed a right? lot of people got killed they turned off the electrician they were cutting the guards heads off and putting them on sticks when they turned the lights on after the riot the feds mm -hmm. had to come in with the national guard they thought that they had broke the pipes to the place. When they turned the lights on, it wasn't pipes. It was blood. That's how many people they killed, the blood. So the producers made a deal. If you spent the night in the prison in the morning, no questions asked, they gave you a 1000 bucks. Nobody made the night. They said it was haunted. They even had an Indian really? come and bless the set. Really? Yeah, this yeah. is. Did you t think There's about no doing eerie. that? No, I never no. thought about it. They said that they kept painting the the floors, uh -huh. but there was so much blood in the floors. After 10, 15 years, the blood would still come up from time to time. They had to paint twice a year. Wow. That's And it's a, the Butcher's uh, something. It's the yeah. Santa Fe, New Mexico prison riots. If wow. you want to get the book, it's the Butcher's something. something fucking I love weird. Santa Fe. What a great artsy fartsy town, but I fell in love with it. Yeah, like it's the, pretty nice up there. I like the vibe there, man. That fucking vibe was... Funny enough, if you had the money, that'd be a great place. It to was have Boulder it. Light. You've been there, Santa Fe. Yeah, yeah. I it was very Santa Boulder very Light. Nice. They had a Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah. Very, very romantic. Yeah. The hotel we were at. Yeah. That's the first. That's the. That's the I, I did town. something. I did something in Santa Fe I hadn't done in a long time. I picked up a little girl at that hotel, at that bar, and that's the one I told. She's like, I need. 
she, Tracy Morgan was fucking around with her first, and she was swallowing the whole bottle in front of Tracy Morgan, and Tracy Morgan's like, tell me you want a black baby. Oh, shit. Right. He was Tell nuts. me you want to suck some black dick. And I mean, there's a table full of guys with a, <laughs> an Adam Sandler party. And finally, I go, fuck this. I'm getting the fuck out of here. And I get to leave. And the girl's yeah. like, she's joined. She's like, do you know where to get Coke? And I'm like, oh, yeah. I didn't know. So I took her home and I fucking had bare aspirin from my heart that they gave me. And I crushed it up. <laughs> and I put it in aluminum foil and I told the Noriega was downstairs. <laughs> and I went downstairs and made believe like shit, I met Jack. Noriega. And I came back with the aluminum foil. And I started giving her little bumps of this fucking aspirin. And her hips and her jaw started gyrating. It was fucking crazy, Felicia. You couldn't write this shit. And before you know it, the girl's like, do you have any porn? It was crazy. <laughs> and then when she seen the girl sucking dick, she's like, oh, I could do a way better job than that. Well, go ahead, show me. I mean, it was crazy. That's I don't a, know if I'd want a girl that was John sucking on my dick. Well, you know what that's I mean? That's all that's, I'm that's, saying. That's the, that's the motor reaction. The throat's working. There's just you know no what I'm way you can, you can protect <laughs> yourself from them fucking teeth. We had, a, we had a really, really, and I, I want to thank you, Nick. Thank Not you only so for much coming for on, but for we being my brother that. all and these you are years. Fucking I'm here. Awesome. I'm here yeah, for you, baby. You're a bad motherfucker. And, uh, I'm, here for I'm you, a fan. You know, you know it's funny because like the the is like the fucking Wayans. You know, they got like nine actors now in the family. You know, <laughs> your cousin. Your, and now we got <laughs> yeah. your son. And the Barrymore's in New York. Yeah. The Barrymore's yeah, in New whatever. York. Yeah, whatever. I don't know. It was really nice fucking having Thank you, you like my Thank brother. Thank you very, very, very I much. I knew you'd be an interesting sure. fucking guest. Yeah, you were. You made me laugh, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah. And now I for like a word. Partner. And now <laughs> for a word from our sponsors, motherfuckers. All right? You want to buy somebody a gift, something neat, posters, a book, a DVD, a coloring book. Go to TaintedVisionArt.com, all right? They got everything you need. There's always a sale. There's always a party. I love those guys down there, Derek and my man. They ship across the country for free For free if the order's over uh, over $50. And if you want to call them, 818-523-3975. Also, our main motherfucking sponsor. Get to it. Let's keep it going. My people over at Adam and Eve, fill your fucking Easter basket up with some vibrators, dildos, and DVDs. Why rape for a rabbit? Go in there and fuck the shit out of your wife and your girlfriend. Find an egg in find an egg in that fucking monkey and eat it. That's where the fucking egg is in between her fucking legs. It ain't under no fucking bush. You want to find a good egg? It's called the uterus. You cocksucker, suck that motherfucker. Anyway, Adam and Eve. For all your sexual needs, go to Adam and Eve right now. Order something for uh, whatever Easter Sunday. They've got dildos. They got uh, rubber dicks. They've got men fucking sex aids. They got films. They got lingerie. But you got to go to the web page to see it's go there. Go to the web page. Go into the discount code box, and if you type in Felicia F E L I C I A, you will get ten percent off, free shipping, a gift, fucking lube. Asshole lube, pole lube, you get everything. That's why I fucking do all my shopping at Adam and Eve's. They even have a sale on Benoit balls. They went out in the 80s, but <laughs> they're making a that comeback. Again? Can you say Benoit that? balls. Mm, they're having a sale on Benoit balls. balls. But people don't know who Benoit balls because you're too young. You stick like 22 balls on a string up your girlfriend's ass. And, and once happened? she pops a nut, you pull that motherfucker like the 4th of July, and it's all over the shite. Next thing you know, a Chinaman will show up with a bag of egg rolls. <laughs> That's how you eat that fucking monkey. Also, <laughs> I want to give a shout out to JR. Joey Custom. Custom screen Indeed. print. My man up in Rochester helping me out with some shirts. And besides that, Felicia Michaels. Well, I would like to say, by the way, if you are in the neighborhood to shop for anything else other than sex toys, please go to Amazon. Uh, through our webpage. If you go to our webpage at beautyandthebeast.com, there's an Amazon banner. Click on that banner. That's a portal. It'll take you right to the Amazon site. It doesn't cost you a penny, but uh, we get uh, a little fee because uh, you heard it here. Go to amazon.com through our website. You could also go to iTunes and do us a big fat fucking favor and put a sweet review on. Come on, Nick was over here sweating, telling stories, making us laugh. You need to go to our website and put a review at the Beauty and Beast uh, a page. That and would be wonderful. Where you at in Phoenix next week, Scott? Stone? I am going to be at the Comedy Spot this weekend, uh, Friday and Saturday. It's going to be a crazy show. Uh, Will Durst, I hear, is going to do some guest uh, spots. and. That'll be a lot of fun. And then on Thursday, I'm going to be at Boston at the Women in Comedy Film Festival. And next month, I will be in Chattanooga at the Comedy Hedge. Okay. And I will be at the Miami Improv March 29th through the 31st. Get your tickets now. 
8,200 tickets are going fast, cocksuckers. Besides that, I love you. I love you, Nick. Felicia, you sexy motherfucker. Uh, you know, like Clint Eastwood wore a poncho. Uh -huh, I got my but poncho. But he had a gun under it. You got She's those awesome. tremendous titties under awesome. it. Awesome. One shoots you and the other one sprays you with fucking milk. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, one, one could dream that at night, yes. I love you, yeah. Felicia. All Thank right. you for another great show. Thank you, Uncle Thank Nick. Thank you, Nick. Bye, bro. Mwah.